Well, hi, you guys. I just got home from uh, Hammett Hospital. They kept me overnight. And um, the first night at the hospital, I suffered really bad. But then the following day, I was able to get some sleep. And I slept most of the day away. And uh, I was just so exhausted. But I don't really remember anything. Um, I don't remember being taken to the surgical room or anything. Sadie says they came and got me. And I don't remember them taking me anywhere. So they must have put me out right in the pre-op room I was in. I'm not able to turn and look at you guys right now because I'm leaning up against some pillows. I can't twist my back or anything. And my computer is off to the side here. So I've got this uh, cervical collar that goes all the way around and down my back, part of my back. And it's got interchangeable pads for it. And the nurse, uh, one of the nurses actually gave me an extra one and they're not allowed to do that. She could have been fired for doing this, but she gave me an extra collar. That's like the one I'm wearing. And, uh, when I was in the hospital, um, I had two nurses, you guys that were hitting on me bad in the room. I mean, hitting on me, like you would not believe and the nurse that gave me this, her name was Jennifer. She says, I want you to have this and just don't tell anybody. And she put it in my bag. And uh, she was she was uh, calling me handsome and babe and everything in the hospital. And she was rubbing my hands and my arms. And it's like, geez, she acted like she wanted to go home with me. Super nice girl. But I've, I've gotten that from nurses before, but never quite on the extent of like this time. And... Uh, she was just really super nice but i've also got another collar that i have to wear this one's rubber it's a two-piece i have to wear for bathing and, and washing up i had a sponge bath today but i wasn't able to wash much just because i can't reach you know all over my body so i could just only wash my upper body and my face and i brushed my teeth and that was brushing my teeth was very difficult and uh, they had a hard time, you guys, putting an IV in me for uh, anesthesia. And they made an attempt here, and the long plastic needle kinked, and they couldn't back flush it, so they pulled it out. And then they did another one here in the side of my wrist. That bandage has been removed. And then finally, they got it on the top of my hand because my veins were rolling. So the one that did the top of the hand after two nurses couldn't get an IV in my arm, um, they had a doctor do it, uh, a male doctor, um, Dr. Kim. And he's, he's Asian, super nice guy. And he's also, he was also my anesthesiologist. It's the first time in my life that I've had a licensed anesthesiologist who is also a licensed medical doctor. So Dr. Kim was my anesthesiologist and he's the one that put the, the needle in the top of my hand and got it so he was super nice he talked to me about the problems i've had with anesthesia in the past and he says i assure you he says none of that's going to happen on my watch he says nothing's going to go wrong he says i'm going to watch you closely and take very good care of you he says you're in the best of hands so he was right and I got to see my surgeon. I got to see the whole medical team before they took me in there. There were six people in there working on me during the surgery. And um, I, don't, I don't really have the sore throat that I was expecting. It's, not, it's, it's sore, but it's not like you think with a sore throat. It's, it's more pain with swallowing, you know, with the Adam's apple going up and down. And I got a, you can see through the collar here, I got a big bandage across the whole front of my neck because they went underneath my Adam's apple and up and through all the way to the back of my neck. And they had those spring loaded instruments that pull everything open so they can get right to the back of your spine. Very horrific thing. And my throat feels very, very strange. It's very hard to swallow because it causes dysphagia and I've already got dysphagia. So it just made it worse. And uh, I was also told I'm not allowed to push this button right here because if I do, it rings the president. So I got to watch it. I don't touch that. But I have extra bandages um, to change on my neck. And I even bought some big waterproof gauze bandages like things that I can stick to my neck. But it's, uh, it's a pretty long incision. It's about that long. 
It's a big one. He drew with a marker all the way across the the bottom side of my throat where he was going to go in at. And uh, they had to scrub my neck all down with a medical solution. So I'm all stained all around my upper neck and my upper shoulders. And, uh, and they got something, they got something that like glues it together, but there's also something that's clamping together, like almost like staples. Uh, They were, they were telling me what three things that I've got on my neck. And I can't remember because I've, I've been on so many drugs, you guys, I, I, I don't remember much. I don't remember saying Sandy saying goodbye last night when she left to come back home before she came out to get me when they discharged me today, but she went home late from the hospital. She stayed with me all day long at the hospital. So it was a very long day for her. And I told her I appreciated all her help. And uh, she didn't end up leaving until dark last night from the hospital to come back home. Um, she put in a long day for me. I don't really remember the day because I went into surgery late just because they were having a hard time getting needles put in me. And they said I got good veins. They just couldn't get it for some reason, but the doctor ended up getting it. So, uh, I, I feel pretty good. I feel better today than I did yesterday. And last night, last night I was suffering pretty bad. They had me on some heavy duty drugs. They also had me on, uh, um, that drug that everyone abuses right now on the street, fentanyl. I think that's what they call fentanyl. Yeah, fentanyl. They put me on that with another drug. So between the two, I was on the I was on the dark side of the moon. So I don't really remember a whole lot, but I had a private room. I was on the eighth floor, which is the highest floor in the hospital. There's eight floors. I thought there was 10, but I was at the top floor of West Wing. And everybody in that hospital has a private room. That hospital has nothing but private rooms. You don't have a roommate any longer, which is nice. So I had my own private room. I had a phone, a TV. Um, There was a large window there that I originally didn't think there was, but it was because they had the shade down. So I thought it was part of the wall. So I felt like I was in a janitor's closet, but then they put the shade up and I realized I could look out over the city of Erie. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't facing the water, so I could see the lake from up there. That would have been a nice view. But um, I was I was too out of it and in too much pain last night to care, to tell you the truth. They did get me up walking around and um, exercising down the hall with my IV cart and everything. I went back, did a couple laps, and then I had to walk up these fake stairs that they've got and then back down. They had to make sure that I had the the strength to do that. And I've walked around a little bit while I'm here at home. I've been watching out for the cats and gizmo because Sandy's staying here to help me with things until I recover. So I got to watch. I don't trip over the animals or anything else. That's a trip hazard. Um, the ride home, uh, the only part that bothered me is when we got on the 90 and we went, we got on the on-ramp and it just loops right around like a clover and just leaning in the car try to keep myself upright and straight that that hurt but the bumps coming home on the highway and all that didn't bother me like it does some people and uh i've been able to talk right off the bat so no problem with talking i don't know if my voice sounds any different hopefully not but uh i've been able to talk and everything i haven't had no problem with breathing or anything like that i can turn my head a little bit not a lot but i can turn it and um Bending over to brush my teeth was difficult this morning. I did eat uh, a little bit last night, not much, but I ate more uh, this morning. I had a full breakfast of oatmeal and uh, I had strawberry ice cream. I had some applesauce. They brought me a cup of coffee. I only was able to drink like a third of that because it's it's hard to drink something when you're you can't move your head. And then I had a good lunch. I had turkey, gravy, mashed potatoes. So I can, I can still eat some food, but I got to take little teeny tiny, like little kid bites. I I can't put too much food in my mouth because I have a hard time swallowing because, uh, disturbing everything in my throat is, is painful. It's very painful. I feel like I got a softball in my throat. Every time I swallow, I just feel that go up and down and it hurts. So, uh, tonight I think I'm going to just have broccoli cheese soup. And just, you know, eat everything but the big pieces of broccoli. I'll probably cut that up with a fork and it's tender. So I'll just take it easy for now, but I can't have any bread, nothing like that. I'd choke on it. 
So I can have some solid foods. I just, it's very selective on what solid foods I can have, but um, I'll just be glad when I'm, I got this all behind me and I can uh, go on and, and um, see how my neck is going to behave now that it's fused with a cage and a titanium plate and six screws. And uh, yeah, so right now I'm just really sore all across my upper back and shoulders, you know, where the neck comes down like that. It's just right across the back, my shoulder blades and everything because they had belts uh, in the surgery room going on the surgical table, going over me, strapping me down. So your back is forced to lay flat, your hips, your legs and all that. So that's what's sore because I had to lay in that position for two hours, two hours. So I guess that's how long everything took. They originally said it was going to be half an hour, but it took two hours. So, but I haven't had, um, I, I still got some numbness, but not to the extent like it was. And that'll probably only improve as this heals and everything. But the main thing is, is that I will know once I'm recovered, if I still have the problem with neck pain and I'm hoping I don't, I'm not going to know until this other pain goes away to know you know, if my neck is better, that will have to wait until later to know. But uh, while he was in there, he cleaned out the stenosis. He got that all carved out and scraped out. And uh, he took out the disc that was crushed and mangled, and he replaced it with uh, cadaver bone and then the cage and then a titanium plate. And that has to fuse. So I have to wear this collar for two weeks. And this collar is extremely uncomfortable, you guys. I wouldn't wish anybody to have one of these. Um, very, very uncomfortable to wear. It's so hard to get comfortable because I got such a backache from being on that table strapped down that just trying to lean back or, and find that comfortable spot, I just can't seem to do it. So Sandy went down to the drugstore right now to go pick up my meds um, that they have me on for why I'm here at home. And in two weeks, he wants to see me back. But he told Sandy when he came out to the waiting room where she was waiting after the surgery and let her know how it all went, he says that he made my neck like a 18 year old. He says he totally rebuilt it. So it's like having an 18 year old neck again. So that'll be good. I hope it feels as good as that when this is all passed and I don't have the collar on and I can turn my head and see how much of a range of motion I'm left with. Hopefully it's still pretty good. And I just wanted to say to everybody, thank you for your prayers and your well wishes, you guys. It made a huge difference, I believe, that many prayers going up. So thank you all so much for praying for me and rooting for me and everything. Um, you guys have been great. And uh, once I'm back to normal, I'll be able to resume my YouTube videos. But I'll be able to still do videos like this um, just from my couch uh, for the time being. And I'll be uploading videos, let other people know what it's like uh, going through this, because this is just day one post-op, day one of cervical spine fusion surgery. So, so far, I'm doing much better than I thought I would. I wasn't sure if I'd even be able to speak. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to sit upright. I really didn't know what to expect. I was expecting a horrific sore throat, and I don't have that. I do feel a little bit of tightness. And like a stinging pain from the incision where they cut with a scalpel. That's got like a stinging pain to it. So I try not to stretch my throat too much. But other than that, you guys, um, I feel pretty good. I'm just really tired. I'm a little bit hungry. I'm going to try to eat some supper tonight. And then I'm just going to be taking it easy. But I just wanted to do this first day post-op video to let you guys know that I'm doing fine. And I appreciate all your guys' prayers and everything. So thanks a million, you guys. Um, means a lot. And uh, I will be making more videos as I can and updating you guys on my progress. So until I see you in the next one, you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.